Thank you. Kia ora. Uh, and add to that, I'm uh, also the uh, current demonstration lead for Silicon LUDF and uh, a farm owner in Golden Bay, Tarkaka. I'm actually Corrigan's neighbour, so you some good epigenetics and good water quality going on in, in our valley. Um, so pasture harvested, learning from our, our client base and the DSM analysis. What DS, DSM is, it's Dairy Systems Monitoring. It's been a joint venture I've done with Chris Lewis. And we also have Pharmax uh, taking over ownership of this now as well. It's a benchmarking program. We use uh, the Pharmax Dairy model to calibrate monthly how the farms are performing. We look at cost structures on an annual basis as well using cash books and dairy based principles. Uh, the data that we, we have here represents 68 dairy farms in Canterbury, uh, Tasman and Southland, but the majority of it in, in Canterbury. Uh, same slide you've seen three or four times from three or four presenters, but to put in perspective, for every tonne dry matter per hectare we, extra we can harvest on our farms, profitability is improving by $560 a hectare. Uh, this year the data is about $660 per tonne dry matter uh, per hectare because the payout's a bit higher. But we've spent uh, several hundred million on this one, and this is on this graph. Uh, this is really around irrigation as well. So uh, border dikes were 10 tonne centre pivot, 14 tonne centre pivot with high nitrogen uses, about 15, 16 tonne with, with our farm X feed harvested. Um, and what we're going to go through is actually uh, also some of the principles around how farmers are improving feed harvested based on the resources that they have right now. So we've analysed our, uh, broken our client base down into uh, three um, potential EBIT. Uh, so the potential EBIT that comes out of Farmax, so low, mid and high EBIT farms. I'm going to discount the low EBIT farms or, uh, right from day one. Um, <laughs> I'm one of them, Corrigan's another. Uh, that's that's Tarkaka. Uh, this is our 1920 data. We got smashed with a 1 in 50 year drought on this particular year. Uh, it was better than the year before, that was a 1 in 80 year drought. Um, but the key focus here is those green and red farms are often neighbouring farms. Um, and you know, typically Canterbury farms. Um, the, uh, the stocking rate on those high farms is, is slightly higher. Um, feed harvested per hectare goes from 13.3 to 15.2, but probably the other, the key one there is that they have been able to harvest another 270 kilos uh, 240 kilos of dry matter per cow. They're better at giving cow, you know, grass down the cow's throats. They've lifted their per cow production from 469 to 508 kilos of cow, so a really solid performance from that group. And they've been able to do it with less supplement uh, per, per cow as well. And I'm going to get into how they, how they do that. Obviously, this isn't an average, average group of farmers either. Uh, Mid Canterbury averages about 430 kilos per cow. And this group are doing 470 kilos a cow. So I'm, I'm working with good farms or farmers, or are they just really, really good farms? So I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that as we go through this. Um, so one thing that the, the top farmers do is, is, is they focus on what makes a good lactation curve. So they really chase their peak, uh, understanding per cow production through August, September months, know how to feed cows, monitoring per cow production, getting to the, heast, uh, the highest peak possible. Um, and it's no coincidence that those, those lactation curves you know, chase each other, that's the Woods lactation curve. And it's a just good demonstration about how sticky it is and how much the peak drives the potential performance for the year. Uh, mid farms just haven't got the peak um, and they haven't, aren't able to uh, allocate feed, fully feed cows, and now, now there's springs um, as well as those top performing farms. Um, and so when we analysed out and looked at the average cover of those top and mid farms, it became very, very clear um, just what is going on um, between the haves and the have-nots around, around um, performance. Um, and I was wrapped when I came across this. You think I doctored it, but I, I honestly haven't. It's a, um, it tells a pretty good story. So those, those top farmers, they start with a, a slightly higher cover. Uh, they probably have a bit more tetraploids and grow a bit more in the winter time as, as well. But they, uh, they identify where they need to be around that average cover at about 2300, bring their cover down to that and then hold it there for the rest of the season. 
quite remarkable, isn't it? Their average cover, typically from the 1st of September right through to the 1st of May, only varies by about 20 or 30 kilos of dry matter per hectare. Now, that's super, super control and understanding in terms of the, the management that they're putting in, in place to achieve that. Um, quite remarkable. So, whereas the, the, the average, our average farmers um, didn't quite start up, but they lost control of their round, don't monitor their pasture, don't allocate properly, um, lose the utilisation, the utilisation goes out the window as well in the springtime, and their average cover, as you can see there, is dropping down to 2,100. And at 2,100, it's very difficult to fully feed cows on a pasture-based system without using a lot of supplement and getting good utilisation of those supplements as well. And quite often those supplements, the silage will, um, uh, are called uh, silage a milk retardant. Um, it's better than fresh air and scenery, but it will bring back cows, especially when they're at their peak as well. Um, uh, so, you know, that's a big part of, of, of lack of peak. But even for the balance of the year, that those average, our, our average farmers who are still achieving pretty good per cow production have not successfully controlled their pasture cover. So round length's gone, uh, cover's gone too low, round length's too fast um, through November, December, probably took off too much silage, um, uh, whacked on a whole lot of nitrogen to get themselves out of that hole, um, and then they didn't know when to turn the nitrogen off. So um, pasture cover's got too high in February, and out, out the window they, they went as well. Um, in, in terms of impact on, on pasture growth, uh, and we've heard a lot of this um, in, in the last uh, couple of days. Um, uh, uh, Derek Moot's session was on, on, based on a lot of the stuff yesterday. Um, Dave Chapman's done some great work at LEDF. Um, David has uh, got cabin fever during lockdown and analysed 10 years' worth of data on, on LEDF, which really highlights how much more grass that farm grows when it's now running with its average cover 100 higher than it used to. Um, so it's supporting some of the things we've heard the last couple of days. But basically the, uh, the top farms, uh, Farmax is based on an average utilisation of 85%. We, we run everybody with the same utilisation just because without knowing any, any better and being on farm. Uh, how that exhibits itself with growth rates here is that it's showing that those farms, mid farms, just have a poorer growth rate. Um, uh, in reality, that's likely to be also uh, as much around poorer utilisation and lower covers um, going there. The, in terms of the growth rates during the summer rounds, um, you know, that's pretty genuine. They're, they're running with too lower covers, uh, running with uh, uh, too fast around lengths as, as well, and compromising, compromising the, their summer growth rates. Um, so you know, a lot of this is really boil, boiling down to just controlling pasture, feed budgeting, and, and, and uh, making really good proactive decisions. So the common, uh, common traits of the, of the high performers, um, they all do weekly farm walks, every week, um, no excuses. In the winter, in the spring when they're busy, and every week of the year. Quite often they're also the only, uh, the farm managers, uh, contract milkers, share milkers, are quite often the only ones who also do the farm walk. It's the most important job of the week. It's not one that we can delegate. You can spot someone, you can spot a team when they're sharing farm walks because their growth rates and their covers start bouncing around as well. And when they're bouncing around, they're not sticking on the graphs that we showed before. Um, they all use some form of software. Um, uh, AgriNet has become a really popular program. This is really embarrassing for us New Zealanders. It's Irish. Um, we've got pasture coach there as well, which is good for, uh, which is Chris Lewis's product, good for determining um, pasture growth and monitoring uh, uh, covers. Struggles a wee bit with feed budgeting there. In terms of weekly decision making and a decision support tool, we, and I'm happy to be corrected on this if someone wants to show me another product, but we don't have anything that's really been developed and works well in New Zealand. We're relying on our Irish uh, counterparts. Uh, they monitor per cow production closely, especially in the spring, and in the summer, if anything changes, they will react immediately. Um, they know their growth on a weekly basis, they know their demand on a weekly basis as well. Um, they use supplement when they've got a shortfall, fill it up, this all sounds easy, and they cut silage if, if there's a surplus as well. 
So they have really got this, really got this dial, dial, dialed up. Sounds really simple, doesn't it? And they're also prepared to cut nitrogen out when they're in a surplus situation as well. And the really disappointing thing with this is very, very few farmers can do this. Um, and that's my concern um, uh, you know, for the industry is you know, there's a lot to be gained here. We've had all this good science um, and, and, and great ideas, but we are failing to get this good science and good ideas across the farmers. Um, and uh, also having good tools that farmers can use for decision support tools. And probably to be fair, us as consultants and, and the, and the uh, industry support bodies as well, we don't have enough focus on just the basics of, of managing pastures. Um, so that's the challenge to you is, uh, is interested good bodies, NZIPM, Dairy NZ, Beef and Lamb, how do we get some uh, better support and coaching for farmers? As consultants, we tend to try and hold this a bit too close. Um, one of the things I've been working on really uh, a lot for the last couple of years is how to coach farmers to do this so we can nail that great lactation curve growth rate the whole, whole nine yards. Thanks.